are in listen only mode. Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. Uh, today's topic is what to do after engineering. So we selected this topic because uh, a lot of Indian engineering students, because uh, most of the Indian students, they go for engineering, which is very popular in India. But what happens, what we have seen in the, in the last few decades or maybe in the last five years especially, when they are in the final year of BTEC or after completing their BTEC or BE, they are quite confused that uh, shall we go for MTEC or MS or shall we go for MBA. So that's why, I mean, we have chosen this topic today for our webinar series and uh, we would like to help some students and uh, give them some suggestion. Okay, what are the options available and how we could choose whether to go for an MS or an MBA. So let's get started. So I would like to start like this, say, if uh, someone asks me or if I ask you, like, uh, where would you like to go for vacation this year? Uh, it is a summer time and a lot of people go for vacation to different places in the summer. So it depends on your interest, on your lifestyle or in your preferences. Say some people would like to go for a hill station. They would prefer going to a hill station or maybe a beach, or maybe just uh, taking a sightseeing of a town, a historic or old town, or maybe a road trip. I mean, uh, quite uh, the young guys, they like the road trip, especially the boys. I mean, no offense to the girls, but uh, yeah, they like the road trip. Or maybe a forest, just close to the nature and enjoy the wildlife. And there is another junior which is called adventure sports. I mean, few people they would enjoy adventure sports. It could be uh, monkey jumping or air drive or sky driving or water sports. So it depends basically on your character, on your type, on your personality, where you would like to go for the vacation. So the same thing happens in, ca in case of choosing between MBA and MTech or MS. So it, as I said, it depends on your passion, on either in on your interest, and also on your ambition, on your career goals, where you want to see yourself, say five years down the line or twenty years down the line, and what interests you. Is it the technical stuff or the business stuff which uh, that interests you? So let's start with the master of science or engineering or say MS. I would uh, categorize like that only today. So what is MS? So it's basically the further specialization in the field. It's like you become a subject matter expert. You become a technical expert in your field. And uh, you don't need to uh, focus on the business planning, at least on a daily basis. Suppose you are from a mechanical engineering background. So you can choose your specialization in the field of mechatronics or maybe uh, some uh, maybe some other uh, other field if you're from electronics and communication background you might specialize in wireless communication or maybe some other field if you are from biomedical engineering background you might specialize in uh, say mri or fmri so it depends uh, what field interest to and it is it's basically it will be the technical expert now mba mba is basically it's a systematic structure degree program and it helps you to develop your business skills so which include like the day-to-day -day operation of the business uh, you have to manage people and uh, other resources and how are the mba programs well mba programs are quite practical i mean in abroad i would def uh, I'd focus on the abroad mba programs only today so it's basically they are more practical interactive and they they put a lot of focus on finding solution to the real business problems. They, uh, so the candidates, and that's why, because a lot of people, a lot of candidates ask us like, why the, why do the MBA programs in abroad need experience? Because uh, I'm not sure uh, that you might know or not, but uh, MBA programs in abroad, they most, in most of the cases, they, they need the candidates with work experience. It could be, it could be two years or three years or four years. There are some pro there are some uh, programs uh, where you can enter as a fresher, but ideally, in most of the cases, you need at you need to have at least three to four years of experience. In Europe, some of the uh, prestigious schools may say Oxford, Cambridge, or ATC Paris or IMD Switzerland. You might need more than that. So you might need six years or seven years of experience. So. 
you have to you have to look uh, what's right for you because uh, after your after choosing your after focusing on your passion and ambition you have to also decide okay what is the right fit for your profile and pocket for masters in uh, for ms degree the entry requirements are you need to have a very good bachelor's degree maybe uh, if it's a percentage system then you need at least 60 to 70% if it's a gpa you need to have a really good good gpa apart from that if you are going to apply in us or a few programs in singapore or germany or maybe in canada you need to have a good gre score as well uh, to crack the to get into the ms program and and of course the ilts or toefl that's uh, mandatory for any program in abroad uh, in most of the english speaking countries and uh, like that for mba now mba you need a bachelor's degree and as i said you need to have work experience at least 2 to 4 that's the average for most of the good schools and as i said for mba programs in europe uh, the bar might be high and you need to crack the gmat i mean on an average you need a gmat score of uh, around 650 but it varies school to school um, in uk you might find some uh, universities where you can be accepted uh, with a gmat score of 600 but uh, for good schools, uh, you need more than that, maybe 700. It's same in the US for the Ivy League schools. You need to have something around 720 or 730 uh, GMAT score. So the bar is quite high. But uh, in some schools, uh, the requirement is only 550. So you have to look around. You have to do your own research. Now let's uh, have a look at the cost. The MS degree that will cost... Uh, much lesser than MBA. I mean, ideally, on an average, it might cost to something between three lakhs to twenty lakhs, and there are a lot of scholarship available as well. But for MBA, MBA, as I say, they are very expensive. I mean, you can find programs with fifteen lakhs, twenty lakhs, uh, but uh, some of, some of the prestigious schools, the MBA courses are very expensive. I mean, it might cost you something like fifty to sixty or maybe seventy lakhs. And uh, unfortunately, that not there are not many scholarships for uh, MBA programs, because what happens uh, in most of the cases when you work for an organization, say you have worked for a company for three to four years, then uh, maybe the company might sponsor your MBA. That's that's how some of the people they fund their MBA. Then they then they after finishing their MBA, they join back the company who funded them. Now. Another confusion, like okay, shall I do? Because some people will be uh, will be convinced. Okay, no, I want to do MBA only. But uh, shall I join uh, MBA as a fresher, or shall I gain some work experience? Now it again depends uh, where you want to see. If you are, you have got a family business, then I would say then fresher MBA would be a good enough. Because if you want to finish your studies and join your dad or uncle or your elder brother or sister. With, uh, and help them out with the family business then a fresher mba will be good enough but if you want to join a corporate as manager or a blue chip company at a high position manager position then you need to do a mba uh, where you what the requirement was three to four years or five years of work experience because what happens in those mba programs because as i said earlier it's quite interactive so there will be a lot of case studies. There will be a lot of simulations. So you'll be presented with a business problem, and then you need to find a solution. And it will be a teamwork. It will be a group work. So basically, you and maybe you will be in a group of four or five uh, students, and you will be provided with a business problem. Okay, see, the, you, have, you will be provided with the data, and you need to come up, uh, come up with a solution. So it's basically if you haven't worked anywhere before, at least uh, for a few years, then uh, of course, I mean. You won't be putting, you won't be adding any value to the group and to the school as well. That's why the most of the B schools in the US, uh, UK, and Europe, uh, Australia, uh, Singapore, they they are they ask for students, they ask for candidates, they need students uh, with uh, work experience because they can add value to their schools. They can add value to the alma mater. So as I said, uh, in a nutshell, I mean you have to check your profile and your pocket and also your interest and ambition now people uh, there will be people who will be interested no i want to go into management i mean i am i enjoyed my engineering or there might be some people who didn't enjoy that much uh, the engineering so after they want to have a career change they want to track they want to people who want to have a career change 
they can also go for uh, MIA, which is Masters in Management. So now I will differentiate what's the difference uh, the MBA and MIA. So in MBA, you will be you'll be studying a combination of different subjects like marketing, finance, accounting, business management, e-commerce, human resource, IT or information systems, entrepreneurship, operation management, technology management. And you can also have a specialization in one of those fields. So say for you, you will be studying all these subjects in the first year. In the second year, you will be you need to have a specialization like MBA finance or MBA accounting or MBA marketing. But uh, people with uh, less work experience or no work experience and with lesser budget, and if you want to have a, if you if you would like to have a career change, you can go for. The MS courses, say MSc Management or MSc Finance or MSc Marketing, MSc Business Analytics. MSc Business Analytics is a very good course. I mean, it's quite close to MBA. Of course, the, these courses are not the uh, alternatives for MBA, but it will it will teach you all the uh, tech, uh, managerial aspects of the business aspects, and uh, it, they are quite helpful. And then, of course, Masters in Information System. People from IT background, this is a very good course for you. And of course, masters in accounting, finance. I mean, this these courses will be cheaper, and uh, would be, and you can be accepted with uh, no work experience. Of course, good schools, for example, London School of Economics uh, in the UK. I mean, for uh, for that school, you will you need to have some work experience to get into the program, and some other good schools in US as well. And sometimes it's beneficial to get into a MSc course uh, in the business field in a high ranking university rather than doing a, a general MBA in a mediocre university. So it depends on the profile and the pocket again. So, so far we have described the difference between MS and MBA and of course between MBA and MIM. Now there might be people who are still confused. Okay, I'm not sure what to do because uh, there'll be some people who really enjoyed the engineering. They want to continue. They wish to continue with the technical aspects, and but they also want to learn the managerial aspects as well. I mean, you can learn managerial aspects uh, while working in a company, but uh, if you want to have a degree, okay, what to do? Then I would suggest let's go for uh, a customization. So what are the customizations? So if you have a look like uh, you can go say for this, uh, this is Barcelona and uh, just uh, if you recap what I uh, what I showed you in the first slide, so you can have a lot of destination for vacation. So what happens in Barcelona? Barcelona is like a quite a historic and old town and it's uh, the beach is uh, it's close to the beach so you can enjoy both the historic town and the beach, exotic beach at the same place. In the Switzerland, you can have a road trip along the uh, through the mountains. Then in the mountains, you can also do water sports or maybe some sky driving. And maybe uh, if it's uh, there's a lake or something, you can try the scuba diving. And you can also have some other kind of uh, adventure sports like uh, mountain hiking, rock climbing in the mountains. So you can customize your vacation like this. And same goes for management and engineering aspects. So for that, I would suggest this kind of courses, engineering management, masters in engineering management. This are ideal solution for the students who want to pursue both, who want to learn both, and or for those students who are still a bit confused whether to go for MS or MBA. These courses are excellent mix of technical and management aspects. And uh, for most of the programs, I mean, if not most, at least there are programs where GMAT is not a mandatory. And the fees, the costing are quite uh, are much lesser than the MBA programs as well. So this could be a very good alternative for uh, this kind of people who want to study both engineering and management. So these are some of the examples. So don't uh, don't get be confused that okay these are the only programs. No, these are not the only programs. These are some of the good programs, some of the best of best programs in Europe in engineering uh, technology management. So as you can see, this is the first course from RWTH Archer University in Germany. So it's MSc Management and Engineering in Electrical Power Systems. So it's a very good course. It's like you will be studying, you'll be uh, studying uh, in-depth technical uh, technicalities of the electrical engineering and also with uh, managerial aspects. So this is a very good one. Then uh, in the UK from the University of Nottingham, there is the MSc Industrial Engineering and Operations Management. 
then from the University of Warwick, again a very good university. It's a very uh, it's got a very good uh, world university ranking. They offer courses in international technology management and also process industry business management. Then some other courses like MSc Global Management of Innovation and Technology. Then for the IT people, because in India a lot of people, I mean, is, if I choose uh, one course uh, from the engineering field, I think uh, IT and computer science engineering are the most popular. Most of the people go for that kind of uh, that stream. So for those people like who want to go into a consulting role after studying IT or computer science engineering, courses like this, MSc Management of Technology Information Systems, or Masters in Software Engineering for Industrial Applications, or MSc Software Engineering and Management, International Master in Management of Information Technology. This kind of course would be very beneficial because you will be uh, you'll be sharpening, you will be improving your technical skills, and you will be learning all the managerial aspects of the. You will be learning how to. Uh, how to develop a business, uh, getting the business planning and uh, managing people, managing resources. So these kind of programs are excellent mix of both worlds. So these are quite balanced. So you can choose these programs and these programs ideally like one to two years course, you will have an internship in a company and the course fees are quite less. For example, if you're studying in Germany or maybe in Finland or Austria or Denmark, I mean, the course fee will be much cheap. In fact, in Finland, the course there is no course fee so that's a really good thing because uh, i think i had covered in our first webinars that uh, in the countries like norway finland they do not charge any tuition fees for the international students in uk of course there will be tuition fees and they are quite high but still they are not as high as mba and there are scholarships available for example uh, the university of uh, warwick uh, they they offer up to 75 percent of the tuition fee wave so that's a really good thing because uh, the, I think the course fee for that course from the University of Warwick is around 17 or 18 thousand pounds and uh, you might get a 75 percent wave so that will be very cheap at the end of the day so I guess uh, I have provided some valuable insights so the, what are the options and what you could do after engineering you could you could go for MIM, you could go for MBA, and you could go for MS, and of course the last one, which is uh, the mix of both worlds, the masters in engineering or technology management, where you can have the mix of both things. So I hope you guys have enjoyed, and if you have got any questions, I'm happy to take them. Any questions? Any questions? All right, that's really good because I guess then I have uh, clarified some of most of the doubts of the people and uh, they haven't got any questions at the moment so yeah thanks for listening and uh, i'll be back again with our next uh, next webinar which will be uh, the mbbs and md options in abroad so till then uh, goodbye and uh, thank you and of course good luck as well so yeah bye